This is Working Wooden Planes. I'm Abraham. I take uh, antique planes and try to get them back into working condition. Today we have a jack plane uh, made by the Ohio Tool Company. It's their Scioto brand that they made from 1893 to somewhere around 1910. Let's take this apart um, and see what kind of work it needs. Um, yeah, that wedge is really problematic. Um, when I pulled this out before, I found that there was a mud dauber's nest or uh, some kind of spider's nest full of dirt. Uh, that's gonna have to get cleaned out. Um, the toe, some superficial cracks, uh, the heel, uh, same thing, looks pretty decent. Um, the body itself, uh, there's some faded spots or something. There's a nail in there, probably to keep the, the tote, the handle um, in place. Um, one of the cheeks is split out right there. That's definitely gonna require some work. Um, and there's some, uh, some decaying wood on the toe as well. It's pretty bad, but I don't think it's gonna interfere with the functioning of the plane. Um, as long as we make sure that the sole itself is entirely flat, um, I don't think a low spot right at the toe is gonna be too, too bad. Um, so let's check the sole. Um, let's see how flat it is. Um, these older planes, they rarely are and sure enough just look at that thing rocking back and forth it's got a big big high spot right around the mouth um, that's gonna require some probably gonna have to plane that off that's so big I don't know if we can just sand it off so let's check out the throat um, the, there's some splitting on that uh, one cheek right there. Um, careful not to yank that around too much. Um, and then two cracks running up on either side out of the throat. Um, you know those those little um, those little parts of the cheek. You know when they break off, it's a death sentence for the the plane. It's really not worth the um, the work and the or the energy and the work to try and, and put it back on so yeah let's look at this wedge um, you know those those I've heard them called fingers I've heard them called legs I've heard them called ears I'm gonna stick with ears because it's kind of fits the nomenclature of the rest of the plane um, you know they should be um, protruding quite a bit um, their main function is to help hold the plane um, uh, the iron, the plain iron, um, firmly so that you don't get it bouncing around, you don't get any chatter. Um, so we're gonna have to figure out how to fix that. Uh, the iron uh, and the chip breaker, very rusted, um, but we should be able to clean that up pretty easily. I'm a big fan of Evapor Rust. Um, tried all sorts of different stuff, and I know it's a more expensive option but it works really well. Uh, yeah, a lot of surface rust. Um, probably quite a bit of pitting um, in there as well. Um, the big one is, you know, the edge of the iron. Um, and there are lots of divots and, and pits in that, and that's gonna be a real joy to clean up. So yeah, let's, um, let's get to work on this. So cleaning the body, um, there's a lot of different stuff you can use to clean plain body. Um, really the, the thing to, to keep in mind is that cleaning a body, cleaning the body is, there is no right or wrong way to make it look. I mean, I think the definitely the wrong way is to just take sandpaper and, you know, you know, uh, grind down the entire thing. I would definitely caution against that but if that's how you want it to look you know that's absolutely fine um, I think the two best things for cleaning up a plain body in 
in a non-invasive way is denatured alcohol um, is one and then Murphy's oil soap is a is another the denatured alcohol or it's called mentholated spirits I think outside the US is uh, is really good but it's a little strong um, I think you can you can kind of get you can kind of you know, wear off the finish um, you can wear off the patina a little too much for for my liking so I use some synth uh, synthetic um, steel wool really fine and just lightly scrub um, off the dirt that's all you're going for here is you're not looking to put it down to bare wood um, I just want to take off the dirt so do a real light scrubbing a real light application and then wipe it down to get the dirt off um, and yeah you can speed this up a little bit here um, don't need to go slow through the entire plane um, but as you can see as I continue through the whole thing um, that the plane is really starting to really start to take on a nice a nice finish yeah I'll just go back to to real quick saying that you know this is all a personal preference how you want it to look um, you know you, there's no I don't think there's any right or wrong way for for rest for restoring planes um, there's, you know stuff that I don't like there's you know I wouldn't uh, you know taking sandpaper or a belt sander to the to the body I think would be a horrible idea but if you know it's not going to change how the plane how usable the plane is this is purely cosmetic um, so it comes down to personal personal taste um, and I really like the most of the patina left on um, I like even some of the dirt left on because you don't want to keep just scrubbing and scrubbing and wear off the entire thing uh, oh that's right first I have to get all the dirt and bug bits out of the uh, out of the throat um, I think this is what uh, what collectors refer to as a barn find because uh, this is uh, pretty buggy all right so now that we have it all cleaned um, you can use some paste wax uh, to protect it um, another really popular one is boiled linseed oil um, which I like uh, but I do find that a lot of times it will turn um, damaged wood uh, uh, quite dark and that might be fine if you end up having to take off a lot of the finish on a plane you might want that slightly darker look um, but I think on this plane it would have turned it black the one thing I will um, mention is that it doesn't seem maybe that important to do it in the throat um, but actually it's really handy um, later on when you're trying to determine if the um, plane uh, if the iron excuse me is bedding in the throat well and we'll get to that later on um, but yeah definitely definitely wax inside the throat um, even though that's not going to be something that's visible when the plane is being used the reason that the cheeks split out um, a lot of times is because if the iron is left in and the plane is not used over time as the wood expands and contracts because of the weather changes or whatever um, eventually you'll get that splitting um, on this plane it's not super bad so I should be able to fix it with glue honestly I really should have used epoxy for this um, I think it, you know obviously you get a stronger bond with that and probably was a smarter idea um, but here I go I've got the glue I've got my infant Tylenol syringe which is like of the perfect size for gluing in my opinion um, you know trying to create a little gap there without completely splitting the whole thing off uh, so yeah a little awkward um, sort of the camera angle is making this um, a little bit more difficult and then we will flip this thing around and do the same thing on the second side still trying to work some of the glue down into the cracks and 
and clamp this down and let it sit overnight. So the rust came off the iron and the chip breaker really well. It cleaned up real nice. Um, you know that a vapor rust is non-toxic and biodegradable and all the other stuff, uh, but I still wear gloves because I hate getting all that black gunk under my fingernails. Um, we'll probably speed this up a little bit because this is one of the most boring parts of a restoration video. Uh, if you're wondering why I don't just take these and hit them up on the uh, wire wheel and you know scrub them all down that way, um, it's the same reason that I don't like to use sandpaper when I'm cleaning plane bodies. I don't like that look. I don't like that scrubbed brand new look. I don't think it fits with the what the plane is. Um, it's again a total. Um, it's just a personal preference. Uh, it doesn't affect how the iron will work, how well it will take off wood. Uh, it just is about the look and I don't like I don't like that look. I don't like that scrubbed look. Um, and it's, so it's a minimal amount of effort for me to you know use some steel wool real quickly. So the chip breaker looking at it uh, yeah it's nice and flat. I'm uh, seeing very minimal light through it. Um, we'll definitely want to take and uh, clean up the face where it meets the iron, but it shouldn't take much. Uh, the iron, on the other hand, um, is you can tell uh, from there that it's cambered, uh, which is pretty normal for an older plain iron um, because there's so many chips out of that iron. There's a big one right there. Um, I will be grinding off that, that camber, uh, I'll sharpen it as a straight iron. First thing, let's take some 220, I think this is, uh, on the sharpening station and just grind it down until those, uh, until the big chunks are no longer present. It took me a, uh, you know, not surprisingly, a long time to get the bevel put back on there. Um, really don't like using super low grit um, to put a bevel back on a plane. For whatever reason, I think it just tears up the iron. Um, so yeah, I'm using like a 220 or something like that, and it takes forever to get the bevel back. But I think it's, I think it's better in the long term. Now back to some more typical. Uh, sharpening using uh, 400, 800, and 1,000 uh, on here. A little bit of Windex. You're going back to the idea, uh, the, the thing I said about um, not using uh, heavier grits. Uh, the I think one of the, the big reasons too to not use them is they um, they a lot of particulate matter comes off of it when you're using them, and if you're not careful, that can get on your your finer grits, your 400s and your 800s. Um, and I've had it happen where suddenly you look down at the the, the blade and there's a little tiny chunk out of it. And you're like, this is 800, how did this happen? Um, so once again, another reason to not go super, super low, or if you do make sure all of your, all your, all your paper is really well protected. Uh, putting a little bit, uh, putting a little back bevel uh, on the iron, using the ruler trick, using a piece of paper instead of a ruler. Um, and slightly off camera, but shaves really well, and it also does the thumbnail test really well. The sole of the plane is gonna need a couple things. We've gotta get, scrape off that paint or uh, whatever sticky crap that is. Um, should come off pretty easily with a razor. Um, I'm gonna have to come back 
later on after we lap the sole and just really carefully um, file that mouth uh, a little bit um, just to take off the jagged edges. Um, but the lapping the sole is going to be a two-part process. We're going to have to plane off the hump and then come back with some some 220 again and make sure the entire thing is flat. So I'm starting with these little awkward little strokes, um, but I'm trying to be really cautious um, not to gouge the mouth um, and also just to hit that high spot. Um, also the camera's in the way, I can't really get a good stroke either, so. So a good question is, is why didn't I take a joiner and a joiner plane and stick it in the vise and then just run this jack plane on top of it? Um, and I, I think that would have been fine. Um, I, have a you know a 26 inch or 28 inch you know joiner that would have been perfect for this um, I guess I just really wanted to have a little bit more control I wanted to make sure that you know I knew exactly what I was taking off where um, you know the, the thing you got to watch out for too is you don't want to put yourself in a position where you over plane it and then you have to sand it a bunch and that widens the mouth too much which can lead to problems with tear out um, so I think it was taking a very cautious uh, approach here but we're not done there we want to make sure um, that the entire thing is equally level um, from from toe to, to heel this really only takes a couple strokes. Uh, I shouldn't shouldn't sand too much, or you will very quickly over sand and end up with too big of a mouth. So at this point in time, I wanted to to check how well the plane worked. Um, even though we haven't done anything to the to the wedge yet, uh, I just wanted to see how serviceable it was. Uh, yeah, it looks like I have. Uh, wax the bottom at that point in time um, and it takes me a minute here to get the iron set um, even though I've been doing this for a while it still um, still takes me a little bit to to get the iron set on a brand new plane that I haven't used before um, so here starting to get some some shavings with it you can see those shavings they are um, as you'll see they're they're thin enough but they're just all breaking off um, which means that the wedge is not holding the iron um, still while a stroke is made um, so I am getting I am cutting material um, but it's not very efficient um, and is something that we really got to fix. So before uh, we get into fixing the wedge, I just want to um, point something out. This is what I talked about earlier with bedding the iron. Um, you want to make sure that the iron is, you know, the wedge is, holds the, the iron in place, but it also creates um, downward pressure to hold it um, very solidly against the throat. Um, and you can see that the iron has left marks on the waxed surface um, and it's it's getting really good um, pressure all the way down to the throat. You can't really see it in the video but all the way down to the mouth there are um, scuff marks left by the iron in the wax. Um, if that hadn't happened we would have to file down the, the high points. It's actually very simple to do. It's not hard um, but it's one of the things you have to check um, before um, it's one of those things that that has to be checked and taken care of um, before a plane is is usable um, if it's not you're gonna get chatter um, or you're gonna get 
So I apologize for the crappy camera angles on, on this next part where I'm working on the wedge. Um, can't really see stuff too well. Uh, the first thing I did is just cut down um, the length of the, the spines on either side of the wedge, the remains of, of the, of the um, ears. Uh, and then we'll chisel out the center. Um, I was a little conservative and did not cut down those ears, the new ears very deeply. And um, looking back on it now, I wish I had. Um, but in the end, it, we were still okay. Um, it just, I think, would have been a better long-term um, solution. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to chisel out um, the space in between the ears. Um, really uh, very simple. Um, we're not doing anything too complicated. Just want to make sure that we're not going to um, punch out the wood on the back side. And then the next thing I want to do is start cutting out that same uh, angle um, in the space between the ears. Um, that the actual angle is not important, um, but it has to be open enough so that shavings can freely travel up from the mouth into the throat. Um, so you want that at a fairly low angle. Um, I just kind of guessed for, for this one. and. Uh, it ended up being okay. And now I'm just taking a block plane um, and trying to get the new ears to match the same angle as the old ears, um, which I discovered uh, for this one was kind of impossible. I was never able to really get a good uh, idea of what that was, so I put them on the narrow side, which ended up being okay. Um, I think maybe in retrospect I should have left them a little thicker, um, but as you'll see, the plane works just fine with the way that we're doing it. And eventually I got it down to where I really liked it. Um, and that side is a little bit better right there. You can see um, how far down that wedge now goes into the throat of the plane. Um, and those ears are extending, you know, down into the channels set on either side for them. Uh, they're not, it's not going all the way down, obviously, um, to where they, they normally would if this was a brand new plane. Um, but it's far enough down that it's now able to stabilize the plane uh, as it works. So I've got a two by four with a um, sort of a big, um, you know, high spot down the spine, and, and let's see if we can clean it up here. Let's see if we can make it flat. So right away, noticing the length of the uh, of the shavings. Um, This is a pretty deep cut, which you can you can tell because I'm straining a bit, um, but it's handling it just fine. Um, the shavings are nice and long; they're coming up out of the throat really well. Uh, it is, I think, a successful a successful restoration or rehab. So yeah, I hope you liked watching. Um, hope it gave you some ideas for, for working on your own antique planes. Um, I have a whole range of planes I plan on working on. I've got a fillet stir and a, and a, a rabbit plane and then also a smoothing plane I want to do a video on. Um, so if you like it, uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of plane you would like to see cleaned up and put back in action. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching.